Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. And I have a special treat here today, and I am so excited to introduce today's guest. Now, we have all heard of the word influencer, but today we have a really big one here. And the what I love about her, though, is that her platform is about so much more than pretty pictures or a nice filter. So let me introduce you to, to Melvika Sheth who is a fashion and beauty influencer and blogger, model, and creative at heart. Her blog is called Style by Malvika, and she was rated one of the top five influencers by Pixley. She has had major campaigns such as with Reebok, but here's what I really, really just adore about her and why I knew I wanted to have her on here is she's not going to take on partnerships unless it feels good to her and unless it's authentic to her. And she's an entrepreneur really down to her core right from the very beginning. So she believes in being authentic in her work and she speaks openly about her own struggle with body image and even critics and doubters along her journey. So I had her on here today because at the heart of her work is the mission to empower women to go after whatever they want. So welcome, Melvika. Thank you so much. And thank you, first of all, for that lovely, lovely introduction. That was, <laughs> I was like, wow, really, really good introduction. So thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really excited to be here and chat with you. So let's just start with the like the, the simplest question and the basic is what is an influencer? Because we've heard that term used all over social media lately. And so let's just talk a little bit about it because it's kind of fun. Yeah. Okay. So the way I actually like to look at myself um, is a content creator. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, it's a term that I welcome because it's obviously really nice to be able to to know that you have some kind of influence. But you know, when someone else calls me an influencer, I I look at it and I'm like, I never thought of myself that way. But it's really cool that you think of me that way. So, um, you know, an influencer essentially, I would say, is someone who has an influence, and it's as simple as it could be like you have an audience on social media. It could be that you're influential in real life, and I think both are you know very very. Uh, helpful to have an influ influence in real life and then to have a social media presence or an online presence. Um, but I think at my core, I like to look at myself as a content creator. And I think looking at myself as a content creator versus as an influencer really helps me stay true to my craft and stay true to my like creativity and creative roots. And um, yeah, just pushes me more creatively. So how did you get started on this journey? So I actually we'll backtrack way back to when I was a little girl because I think it started there. Um, I grew up quite overweight. Um, I wouldn't even say overweight. I was just on the bigger side. And everyone in my family, everyone in my school, everyone tried to remind me just, oh, like, do you know people are making fun of you? You have oily skin. Do you know that like, you know, my friends used to tell me like, oh, why don't you just like join a gym? And like, why don't you just eat salads and stuff like that? And, you know, it's, it, I think when you're young, those kinds of comments, we take it so much to heart and we really, really try to kind of just like do what we can to make sure people aren't criticizing us. Um, and I, I think the first tool I knew that I had was I knew I had an eye for fashion. And I thought, you know, if people are criti like criticizing the way that I look so much just based on my skin and like my weight and stuff like that, at least maybe I can try to use fashion as, as a way to kind of like get, get, them some, get them to focus on something else. So I started using fashion and really just experimenting with things that worked on me, things that didn't work on me. And I think that's when my love affair with fashion and beauty really started is when I was young and kind of used it as a tool. I would say now my relationship with it has changed a lot. I see fashion and beauty more as a tool to transform into your highest self and just tap into the confidence that's inherent within you. It's just, you know, it needs a little spark to kind of um, get you up and get, get you to that level every day. Uh, but yeah, I think it started then. And in terms of like actually creating this and like inventing this, not inventing, but like, you know, building this platform for myself, um, I went to a school where it, it was known as the number one school for entrepreneurship. And I studied entrepreneurship and marketing there. But the weird fact is everyone that graduate, not everyone, but like a huge majority of everyone that graduates from that school goes on their first few years to work at like an e Ernst & Young or PwC and like all these big companies. And that's also really great. Um, you know, people were working at Facebook and Google on, on all these amazing companies. But I thought to myself, like, why 
would I take all this education that I have about how to build your own business and go and give that to someone else and help someone else grow their dreams, you know? So um, I, I loved fashion and beauty, didn't have a chance to really uh, do much in terms of taking classes or learn or go to fashion school or anything. I had a few internships, but with that fashion, beauty, marketing and entrepreneurship background, I knew first of all that I wanted to graduate early because I had started my blog when I was in college and I was a sophomore and I was spending way more time thinking about my business and my blog and my content than I was about classes. So I told myself, Malvika, we're going to graduate early. We're going to take a year to focus on this thing full time and then see where it goes. And my one year has uh, been up. Uh, so I graduated a, in May of 2019, right? Yeah. May of 2019. And, um, you know, now here I am. This is what I'm doing. Wow. So th you just said so much there. And I'm like, I want to dive into some of that. But first of all, like that idea of um, going to a job that's, you know, your tr typical nine to five job and sort of zapping the creativity out of you is, you mm -hmm. know, and I think it's something that's so common. And I think that we see that. And after, even after you've been in the workforce for a while, you kind of lose that creative spark. So, you know, it's, it's incredible that at your age, you were able to say like, I want to take the skills that I have. I want to take the passion that I have. And I want to take this creativity that's innate in you and turn it into something and like here you go world and here's you know i'm putting this out there so i mean that's amazing and i think that that just goes to there's when you're an entrepreneur you are from the very beginning like there's yeah. no switch that flip it flips at a certain age like every story i've ever heard of an entrepreneur starts when they are a, a child or you yeah. know a teenager so that's amazing so you talk about um that you're not a finished product and that you're a work in progress. And so mm -hmm. can you share a little bit about that? Because I think that's, you know, that's really like a mantra for life. We're all yeah. works in progress. Yeah. So I think most creatives just first we'll talk about like work wise. I think they're never fully satisfied with what they do. And it's actually just a great thing. And I think my, um, I'll backtrack a little bit. I have been trained in Indian classical dance and it's still something I practice a lot. Um, and I think that creative outlet taught me that like there is always room for improvement. So even when it comes to like my content today, I am always, you know, so I have a little bit of self doubt that I deal with. And then I'm like, okay, how can we make it better? How can we make it bigger? How can we, um, you know, impact more people in a positive way? And um, one thing that I've really, really tried to do, at least over the past few months, since I've been reflecting a little bit more during lockdown is, you know, I've understood that this, like the Indian culture that I'm, you know, so close to is, is one that's not represented in my industry. So I feel like it's important for me to kind of uh, share that a little bit more and voice my um, unique perspective on, you know, just being in, you know, staying close to Ind Indian values and, you know, being in the US and how I juggle those. And I think my audience has really you know, resonated with that because I think so much of us deal with that. Okay. We're like modernizing and we're getting like super, you know, just things are changing very rapidly, but how do we stay close to our roots? So that's something that I've shared quite a bit of. And that's also another work in progress is just how am I going to, you know, be able to, you know, how can I say it, impact someone or, you know, strike a chord with someone who is of the Indian culture um, either whether they're fully in India or whether they're an Indian abroad and still be able to talk about fashion and beauty. So I think that's something that I'm really working on. So how do you reconcile? Because I think you're, you're, you're hitting the, the nail on the head when you're a creative, putting your work out into the world is probably one of the hardest things that you do because it's terrifying mm -hmm. uh, to think about maybe you're going to have the criticism that comes back. So how do you reconcile with that fact of like, it doesn't have to be perfect in order for you mm -hmm. to put it out there? Yeah. So I think, I think I was born an overshare ever since I was a little girl. I couldn't keep anything within me, whether it was, I made my mom, you know, uh, when I was in kindergarten, I made her like, I painted a box for her and, you know, for, to her, for her to put her jewelry um, for mother's day. And I wasn't supposed to tell her. And I came in the car and I was like, 
mom, I have something, but I'm not supposed to tell you, <laughs> but I made you a jewelry box. Like I've always been a little bit of an overshare. And I think that um, is what kind of forces me to put something out there, even if it's not like 100%, if it's like 90 or even 85, I'm like, I think this will still do decently well. So I'm going to put it out there. And plus, um, I don't know, I feel like for personally, I feel like not putting something out there for like maybe one or two small things that you're like, oh, I don't, you know, like, I think that will, that will make you too unrelatable. Cause if you try to make everything look perfect and everything has to be perfect and perfect. And this level of perfection is kind of, if you think about it, what, what's, what can be toxic about social media? So for me, it's like striking that balance between aspirational and relatable. Um, and I think that whole me not being perfect and not working myself to that hundred percent level is a good thing. And, um, you know, while we can try to, as I'm a work in progress and while I can try to improve things, I think it's nice to have my audience on that journey with me and see, you know, I'm, you know, not perfect right now, but we're working our way to like getting better and, you know, slowly improving. And that's such a, a hard concept too, because I think you're right. Social media, you you flip through anyone's feed and there's so much perfection out there, but we all yeah. know that it's not real life. And we all know things mm -hmm. have been filtered and people maybe aren't sharing everything. And I think that there's sort mm -hmm. of been that trend to be vulnerable and to be real yeah. and be raw and people want that and they want to connect to that. Absolutely. So as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, what challenges have you faced? And I ask this question because I think that there are so many people out there and I know that I have listeners out there who have a passion project and maybe they're unsatisfied in their job and they want to make the leap or they're doing this sort of side hustle and they're trying to decide wh whether they go all in or not or just change things up completely. Um, what type of challenges have you faced and how did you overcome them? So I would say most of my challenges have been kind of just the fact that I never really had access to the industry that I was trying to get into. And this is something that most people, when they're an entrepreneur, face. Um, I mean, unless you're starting out in an industry where you have connections, uh, a lot of us start purely because we're super passionate about something and we have this love and this need to kind of share something with the world, whether that's an idea, a product, um, a blog, content, whatever it is. So when you don't have those connections, you really have to work your confidence level up to be able to present yourself to anyone at any time. And I think growing up, having to teach myself that confidence because I was constantly just kind of looked at, I was kind of not even given a second look. It was like, if someone was looking at me, they were looking at me to criticize me or tell me mm -hmm. how big I was. Otherwise they weren't looking at me at all. And I think having to build that confidence from within has really helped me as, um, a business owner and it's, it's helped me in my challenges so if my challenges are you know um so I'll, I'll give you an example a year ago I got hacked and that was really really scary for me because that was just when I had graduated from college and decided that I would be doing this full time and um, I was on vacation with my family and all of them were just like they, first of all they didn't really understand what I was doing because it was it's so non-traditional for for right. the Indian culture and then they're kind of like, we'll just let her try it out. And then when it, it got hacked, everyone was immediately like, okay, what's she going to do now? What's she going to get a job? Where's she going to work and whatever. Um, and I just had this, like, I had this moment where I was like, everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. I have still put in all my work to build what I had. I had an audience. I had people that were, you know, engaging with me. I had content that people would remember, even though my account was hacked. So I told myself, even if I don't get it back, we can do it. And it, I was actually extremely peaceful. Um, and also that confidence that I was talking about, being able to present yourself to anyone, I reached out to anyone and everyone that I could find on LinkedIn that worked on Instagram, must have been at least 50 people until one person a week later responded and you know kind of helped me through that. Um, and that one person knew actually a client of my dad's and you know via LinkedIn, you know that connection was able to kind of be understood. So you never know and you just never know uh, who's going to help you in your journey and you never know who you'll meet in your journey. So it's really important to kind of um, teach yourself confidence and just always, you know, try to have a smile, try to be kind and um, have hope because challenges will, will happen. And another challenge I would say is just the mere fact that I'm an Indian woman 
that's 21 years old, I've had trouble people with people taking me seriously. So even when I'm like on business calls or like talking with a brand about collaboration and I'm, you know, you know, whether it's a Zoom call or just a phone call, like people ask me, wow, like, you know, your content is so cool. Um, either they'll say, but you know, we're, we love your content, but you're not exactly what we're looking for at the moment. Mm. Or they'll say, you know, oh, we love your content. How old are you again? And then when I say 21, they're like, oh, you're just a baby. And then I, I think they just don't take me seriously. And I, that's mm. something that I just feel like, you know, I wish, I wish people would just look at people for their body of work instead of um, the other surface level things um, that they do inform who we are, but also, you know, people should be hired on the basis of their talent. Oh my God, I take you so seriously because <laughs> it's just amazing what you have built up so early on, which, you. you know, you can look and say, you've done this much so far. Like, what are you going to do, you know, over, I will ask you that question, not right <laughs> now, but, but there's so much more in store for you too. So, you know, I, I think it's incredible. I think your spirit is incredible. And what you just you. said is really resonated with me because it's something that like, I know so many of my listeners, either going through a, a tough spot in their relationship and mm -hmm. it's, it's the, how do we get out of that? And, you know, your perspective on when you, when something hits that something that is, you know, a really rough time is what do you do with that? You can crumble. You can say, you know, throw in the towel and say, I quit. I'm done. It, um, or you can rebuild and you can say, okay, what can I do to fix this? And that's something that I've always preached to um, people that I work with is it's, you know, take ownership and say, what can you do to get out of this jam? What can you do to take the next step yeah. forward? And that's exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And that's the key, I think, is um, even within relationships, like whether it's my friendships or anything that I always, you know, and if pe friends come to me for boy advice or whatever it is, I always tell them, look within, don't, don't complain to me about like what he's doing or what she's doing. And because you can't control another person, the only person you can control is yourself. And the, the main thing that you have to control is your mind. You cannot let that kind of negativity you know, enter you and you have to be very protective of your energy. So I, I always say, look within, what is it that's bothering you? And then how can you change you? Like, how can you maneuver yourself to push that situation outside of your life or to figure out how to like better your relationship? Because sometimes, you know, we, we look at other people and we're like, they're doing this, this, and this wrong. And we forget to look within and we're like, maybe that, that, and that is happening because I'm not at a space right now where I can be in a relationship and I'm not able to give that energy, the correct energy to that person. Or, mm. you know, it's, it's more about life is all about self learning and it's less about trying to fix other people. So I think that's a very important lesson is learning about yourself and how you can um, be the best version of yourself. Those are such wise words and it's so true. And we can't control everything externally. We only can control our own reactions to things and how we show up to for yeah. ourselves. You know, that's so great. So what advice do you have for someone who wants to turn their passion into a business? How do they get started? I think you have to start before you're ready. I always tell people start early, start before you're ready. In fact, my younger brother, he's right now applying to colleges and I see he has like such a great eye for art and photography and I just have been pushing him, pushing him to start um, like an Instagram just to kind of have a portfolio of his work and he started it and he's actually, uh, you know, he's really enjoying being able to share that. So I think wh whatever talent you have, whatever skill you have, um, don't doubt yourself because, you know, and don't compare yourself. I think those are the two worst things you can do. As you as you start and as you build, you will find spaces where you can grow. Um, early on, there will be a lot of spaces where you can grow. And then as you kind of um, grow, grow, grow more, you figure out more spaces. And growth is such a beautiful thing and change is such a beautiful thing. And I think we should embrace that instead of being scared of it. And I think with that mindset, if you kind of embrace change, embrace growth, you'll be able to start with, you'll be able to get started on your passion project. So. And if every entrepreneur waited until they were ready to start their business, there wouldn't be any businesses out there. I mean, that's I so think true. that that's exactly what we do. We jump in when we're like mm -hmm. half, you know, we have half of a plan yeah. <laughs> and we figure, we figure the rest out. I mean, that's, that's part of, 
Um, and, and, and there's never the right time, you know, there's always yeah. the, there, there's always a, a, a better time or, or what if I started next you know, next month or next year, or in yeah. the, once the kids are out of school or whatever it is. So it's just, you know, I love that. Just jump in, start now, because yeah. imagine where you can be in a year from now or five years from now, exactly. if you start, if you start today, that's awesome. Yeah. So what is next for you? So next for me, um, well, I will say when we were talking about challenges and like just being an Indian woman and um, all these things, I had trouble finding the right agent, the right manager, stuff like that. So um, finally, I think I've, I've found uh, the right one. So um, I've recently signed with them and it's, it's been a great, uh, great journey. Um, I'm also hoping to, you know, get some more work in the commercial space because I, um, you know, ever since COVID happened, I, I literally signed with a commercial agency right before COVID hit and then COVID hit and then auditions weren't really happening. And if they were happening, it was self tape. So um, yeah, I'm hoping to do some more there. And then I think just in general, I really, really want to be able to connect with my audience in more ways. And so every time I get a DM or every time I get a comment, I really think about like, is that, is this something that I should keep doing? Or is this content something that's resonating? And then if I feel like it's not, then I kind of have to, you know, switch up the content schedule. And, and for me, it's really just about being the right kind of voice in the fashion and beauty industry, instead of saying, you know, you have to achieve this level of perfection, I do on my short stories often share that, hey guys, I wake up with acne scars, here's what I'm doing to fix it, um, here's, you know, tips on how you can kind of just have a quick fix to how you, you know, look for a Zoom meeting or whatever it is. I don't want to give people that, that pressure to achieve an ideal level of perfection. I think that comes a lot with just like, being transparent and clear about where you're at and like I share how I edit my photos I share uh my makeup routine and stuff like that so people don't think I just wake up and, and look like this so yeah I think it's important to keep the conversation going and just be relatable so I'm asking a question just out of personal curiosity now is yeah. a day in the life of Melvika um I, yeah. I think people think that that term influencer is you take some pictures and you're sitting by the pool all day and I know that that's not true so can you just share like what does running an influencer business actually look like? So more than actually being in front of the camera, I'm behind a computer. Um, I am planning a content schedule that will kind of resonate with my audience, um, understanding maybe like what national days make sense to talk about, um, planning blog content, creating content for other brands, um, other platforms. You know, I, for me, it's, it's not a, like I'm not trying to show every part of my real life. I'm trying to give people something that will inspire them or educate them um, in some way, shape or form. So I think, you know, it, if I'm taking a photo near a pool and like sitting by the pool, it's usually maybe on a day that I do have like a day scheduled to go to the pool, but that's not my everyday. Other days I'm shooting like specifically, I've decided that this is kind of an editorial look that I want to go for. I'm going to get all the props together. I'm going to figure out, scout a location and do all that stuff. Um, and then it's quite curated. Other days, it's a little bit more relatable. But again, it's about striking that balance. Um, and yeah, I definitely have not had a day where I've sat at a pool for a very long time or anything like that. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot about just understanding how to communicate with the audience and how to grab their attention. And um, much less about, you know, just living a really laid back, easy life and sharing right. all of that. And there's yeah. a grind. I mean, and, yeah. and there's definitely behind the scenes in anyone who's doing that work. There, there's a lot of work to it. Yeah. So the million dollar question then in this pandemic, are you getting up every day and putting makeup on every day and <laughs> getting really dressed every day? <laughs> no. So I stack my content, which means um, you know, three or four days out of the week, I have full days of just like shooting content. Today is one of them. Um, I'm just going to be shooting two or three different brand campaigns today. But yesterday I was fully in my, um, sh uh, gym shorts and an old t-shirt behind a computer with my hair in a bun. So, and I've, I've also shared that with my audience and told them, Hey guys, like I don't dress up every day. I love dressing up. And I think it's, again, it's one of those transformational tools that helps you tap into that level of confidence. But 
I don't think it's realistic to expect yourself to do that every day. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So two final questions. One, uh, where can we connect with you and how can we follow you? Sure. So I'm at Style by Malvika on Instagram. Um, my YouTube is Style by Malvika and my website is www.stylebymalvika.com. Um, I put up blog posts three to four times a month and Instagram. I'm on there every day. That's the easiest way to catch me. Um, DM me anytime, comment anytime. I'm very, very active. I respond to almost all my DMs. Um, and then YouTube, I put up again, a video two to three times a month, I would say. So that's where I am. And all of that will be in the show notes too. So some final words for, um, the woman out there who really wants to go after something and decided that this pandemic is that pivotal point where they're, they're going to make a change and they're going to do something that they never thought that they were capable of. What words of inspiration do you have for them? I would say find what makes you tap into that level of confidence that you know is within you. Everyone has something for me and for a few other people. I'm sure it's fashion and beauty and that helps you kind of transform into that best self, but everyone is different. And I would just say, find that key that kind of just helps you tap into that level. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melvika. You were a pleasure to chat with and Anyone who doesn't take you uh, seriously is crazy because you are rising to the top, girl. So oh, thank you. I was, thank I was so, so glad much. to chat with you. And I, I hope um, everyone that listened or is listening uh, found some tidbits of value here. Thank you.